Hello all, the Lord bless you, the Lord honor you, the Lord cause you to taste of this wonderful salvation that he has reserved for those who love him. Okay, in this three-part series, I want to like look at the judgment of God. It's a very deep topic, but in reality, very simple. The things of God are very simple, but at times men like to complicate things for themselves. To so I could understand who the ancient of days is. We are going to understand the white throne judgment. All these things are ordered so that we can understand the plan of God, the will of God towards all men. His purpose, his eternal purpose. Okay? We have a clearer picture. We know today his eternal purpose is to gather all men back unto himself. Okay? To reconcile all men back unto himself. Okay? To bring into one all things in heaven and all things on earth. Okay? This is the only salvation that exists outside of this gathering unto the Lord, there is no other salvation. We hear again and again Mount Zion. Okay, Mount Zion is the place or the realm of our union. Okay, it speaks about the heights. Heights in God, heavenly places where we are united in one spirit with the Lord. Okay, those of you who have seen you know, mighty mountains, who had the privileges of flying over mountains or viewing them from the earth, okay, what should come to your mind is Mount Zion. What should come to your mind is the unity of the faith upon Mount Zion. So God's intention is to gather men high up there. He says he will gather from the depths. He will gather men from the lower parts of the earth, from the extremities of the earth, in the lower places where there is no knowledge of God, where men are perishing. Okay? The Lord will gather them reach out to them, pull them out, and gather them unto himself. Along this process, there is the judgment of God. Okay, now the judgment of God is not to destroy the souls of men perpetually, but it is to destroy that which destroys men, flesh, and blood. Anything flesh and blood, okay, anything carnal in man is that which is destroyed by the judgment of God. So we're going to like delve into this and begin to understand the eternal judgment of God. We understand the white throne judgment. We understand the lake of fire. And I'm going to try to simplify it as much as possible so that we comprehend and we begin to see the plan of God. The, the Psalm 149, Psalm 149 says, Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song. 
and his praise in the congregation of the saints. Okay, you will sing a new song. Okay, and we sing the praise of the Lord in the congregation of the saints. Very careful that the congregation of the saints is not a congregation, a congregation here on, on the earth. It's not a gathering on Sunday. It's not church gathering. So the congregation of the saints is the gathering in the Lord, in the spirit, in the height of God. This is referred to also as the congregation of the Almighty, the congregation of the Elohims, congregation of the gods, all are united in one congregation, in one body, which is the church in heavenly places. And they all sing a new song. They sing unto the Lord. They minister unto the Lord. These are creatures who live in the Lord and by the Lord. Okay, let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Okay. There's a king that, that reigns over everyone and that is the Lord. We all have put on the mind of Christ. The Lord has become our head. Okay. All of us have united and submitted ourselves to the head okay which is christ and the head of christ is the father it's actually a union in the spirit every man must understand this these things are here to teach us a mystery we are gathered in one unto the lord Praise God. Let them praise his name in a dance. Let them sing praise unto him with the timbrel and with the harp. Praise God. We're, we're going back to the, to the beginning. Remember in the beginning? Sons of God, morning stars, who sing and shout together for joy. What do we sing? We sing songs of Zion. We sing unto the Lord. The men of this age sing unto idols. They sing unto themselves. And they sing unto the, unto the sin, unto men, before men. But we, we, who, we who have risen on high into the Lord sing unto the Lord. And that new song is the song from the beginning. Praise God. The haps. Praise God. I have there's a piano there now. You, when you have the, the 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 piano or the harp, you have the seven strings. The seven strings represent light, truth. Okay, we speak truth, and truth is the Lord. Besides the Lord, there is no other. Okay, we have to change our conversation and begin to speak in heavenly places. We have to have holy conversation. It's not religiosity. Holy conversation is about consecrating and minding the things of the Lord and the Lord alone. Praise God. Okay, I'm going to go to verse 4. Psalm 149 verse 4. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify them, make with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Okay. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. The two-edged sword in their hand. Now listen to this. To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains, their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them 
the judgment written. This honor have all the, his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Now, what the Lord is saying here in this psalm, okay, these psalms are very deep. They're all prophetic. They all point to you and I, our guarding unto the Lord, our union unto the Lord. And it also now goes back to speak about the judgment of the world, the heathen. Anything that does not know God, anything that does not agree with God, anything that resists God, that's vengeance, that's the judgment of God. And the beauty of, the, of this is that God does this to save people. Okay, this judgment of God, it's something that comes to destroy that which destroys men. God. The honor of the saints is to bind principalities and powers. Okay? And bring judgment to anything that opposes God. Now this thing comes spontaneously for those who walk in truth. Those who walk in the light as he is in the light. Those who live on account of God are the ones who manifest the Lord upon the earth. While they joy in the presence of God, while they exult in the presence of God, while they dance in the presence of God, while they experience the beauties and the, the glories of the ages to come in Christ, spontaneously they bring judgment to the world, conviction of sins, and torment upon every soul that does not obey the gospel. Okay, I'm going to go now to the book of Matthew, chapter 19. Okay. Jesus just spoke about going through the eye of the needle. Okay, going through the eye of the needle. It is easier for a rich man, so it's easier for a camel, sorry, to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. very important to understand these principles here. Yeah? A rich man is a man who is still full of himself, who still has self-knowledge, human knowledge. Okay. One who still holds on to his life upon the earth. Okay, now we must understand from the eye view of the spirit, all men have put on the image of the earthly. All men in their transgression have put on the image of the earthly. All men in their transgression have actually left their spirituality and put on you know, a consciousness of flesh and blood, a sense of, of being outside of God. A rich man is the one who is rich in the knowledge of the outer man in relation to the glories of this world. We have to understand these things. To enter back or to return back into the glory of God, that outer layer, that man has to be left aside. That is why he says, those that have left all for my namesake, we have to leave every friend human to lay hold of the Lord 
who is dwelling is above upon Mount Zion. Let us, let us be attentive to listening carefully to these words. Okay, we are not flesh and blood. We are not terrestrial creatures. We are celestial creatures. We are from above and not from, be from beneath. This is the way it was from the beginning. Okay. Transgression is all about the state you walk in. If you walk as a terrestrial man, you know, who is guided by flesh and blood, you are out of God. But if you walk in the spirit, guided by the spirit the, and united in the Lord, you have the glory of God. We have to understand these things very carefully. Praise God. So, this is what we're seeing here in Matthew chapter 19. I cannot read the whole chapter. There's still tons of things to, to see. That's why I have to go fast. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. You can read the preceding verses. It speaks about going through the eye of the car, of the of the of the needle, that no man born of a woman, flesh and blood, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, but with God, in God, as God, we can enter the kingdom of God. Okay, now let us go on. Then Peter said unto him, Behold, we are forsaken all and follow thee what shall we have therefore now those who have obeyed now peter represents says they have left all left the vanities of this age left human sense to follow the lord what will happen here and jesus said unto them verily i say unto you that you, which have followed me in the regeneration, in the rebirth, those of you who are born again of spirit, not of flesh, those who have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, you shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? And everyone that has forsaken house, brethren, sisters, fathers, mothers, or wife, or children, or lands for my name's sake, shall inherit a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Now, you can understand how Jesus chucks in the mystery. Now, these things that Jesus is saying here, they are reserved for the elect. Okay. These things are not things that can be understood by everybody. Okay? These things, you just have to listen. He ends up by saying the first shall be the last, and the last shall be the first. Okay, now let us just break this thing, you know, Gently, those who have followed the Lord in the rebirth, in the regeneration. That means you've left material sins, left the realm of the flesh. You've left houses, brothers, sisters. 
you know, you've left that sense, that thing that attaches you to this world. You've, you've lost your life to follow the Lord. The Lord says that you are going to inherit a hundredfold of whatever you've left behind in this present age. You, in the realm of God, in God's kingdom, in God's world, you inherit you know a hundredfold okay and in you inherit what eternal life or everlasting life that is the life of God okay. it's a, the life perfect all power all glory love Joy, gladness, liberty in the spirit, liberty to do the will of God. Okay. You are spontaneously aligned with the Lord. Praise God. In this reality, there is no death. You continue on in the Lord throughout all generations. Nothing is taken away. Nothing is ever lost again. You've entered into the place of stability. Okay. And this place we enter into, this reality of eternal life, represents the first state each and everyone had in the beginning. This represents our beginning, our first state. And this of you know of a necessity has to be the last state of every man. We left the first state, descended in this world, made lower than angels, you know, fell short of the glory of God, suffered hell and death. We received the gospel. And the Lord has told us to let go of vanity, return unto me, my saints. We have left all and now follow the Lord into a new heaven and a new earth. Our last state has to be of a necessity, the first state. Now these things become easier when you begin to understand that you came out of God. That is your first state. It's pure spiritual consciousness. We are spirit, invisible, immaterial. We are not even known of men. No man, no mortal man knows or can know us. We are not of this world. We are from a kingdom that is without beginning, without end. And everyone who gets this revelation begins to pray, Father, glorify me with the glory I had with you before this world is. We are sent back into the Lord. And spontaneously, we are seated on thrones. We sit on thrones. Jesus speaks about when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. There's a tendency to think of something externally or something apart from us. But I tell you, those who have ascended on high are the ones who manifest the Son of God who sits upon the throne. Okay. We, we sit upon thrones. It says here that you shall sit upon 12 fronts. We sit upon fronts. And we are the ones that judge, bring judgment to the world. We bring judgment to the world. We give life. Okay? And we destroy anything that does not obey 
or align itself with the gospel. Very important to understand this thing. God will never appear except we manifest God. God will never appear. The throne of God never appears unless we are seated on thrones. We have to understand this concept. The saints, Enoch prophesied of the myriad of angels, saints that are coming with the Lord to judge the world. In reality, the Lord is revealed through saint. And the world is spontaneously judged at the appearing of his Lord as he is manifest through his saints who have obeyed the gospel. Now, let us go something. I want to let us read something. I'm going to flash through Daniel chapter 7. It speaks about the ancient of days. Daniel chapter 7, the ancient of days. Let us understand what is happening here, how the ancient of days is manifested, how he appears. What he does, who is the ancient of this? Praise God. Let us begin to understand our calling, this high calling with which we are called. Okay? Now, Daniel chapter 7 is not a very, it's not a complex vision, it's very simple. It's very, very simple. You know, I watch, um, I watched a cartoon some years ago, The Kung Fu Panda. And you know, they all had to, they were all trying to fight, fight for a scroll that was hidden in the archives somewhere in the temple. So many battles, so many wars to obtain that scroll. And they were wondering what the mystery of this scroll was, what was actually written in this scroll. After all the battles and everything, when they finally got the scroll, they looked in the scroll, all they could see was their face. No matter how complex a mystery looks like, it, it's nothing but a revelation of your true identity. When you look in the scripture, you have to see yourself in the glory of the Father. Everything is speaking about you and I. Okay. The volume of the books Speak about you. You have to manifest. You have to appear. You have to show up as it is written of you in the volume of the books. Everything from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation is, speaks about our individual self, about us in the glory of the Father. So what I'm about to read in Daniel chapter 7 is no different. It's all about the mystery of Christ in you and I. In the early verses, okay, Daniel sees four beasts, four terrible looking beasts. Okay. First of all, he sees a wind, a whirlwind that stares of the sea. Okay, that's a whirlwind. It stares up the sea. Four winds staring up the sea. Actually, this, the wind was summoning four beasts because as it's, the winds stare the sea, four terrible looking beasts ascended from the, from the sea. 
I want to look like the, a lion with eagle's wings. Okay. There was another one who looked like a bear. Okay. Which had three ribs in his mouth. Devoid much flesh. There was one that looked like a leopard. Okay. And had four wings of a fowl. Okay. And he had dominion. Okay. And there was a fourth beast that looked very terrible. He had iron teeth. And he destroyed everything on his path. Broke, destroyed everything. Very destructive. And he had ten horns. Okay? And something, you know, one thing you have to understand. He says he saw a horn. Okay? A horn come out, a little horn. Okay, and in this horn, the horn had, you know, eyes like the eyes of man. And a mouth that spoke big things. That's boastful. See? A horn came out of that terrible foot beast. Little horn, having the eyes of a man and speaking boastful things, great things, boastful. Praise God. It's wonderful to understand now the, the wind that blows over the sea, the whirlwind, is the Holy Spirit, is the Spirit of God. So, what we are seeing here. Is the regeneration of man, the rebirth of man. In the transgression, a man descends into the depths of the abyss where there is no knowledge of God. He puts on the image of the beast, the nature, the mark, the image of the beast. Don't let these things frighten you or confuse you. It simply means a terrestrial, beastly nature. Now, the things we see upon the earth, all the evil and all the confusion and the wars, the backstabbings and the murders, and the, this is because man has been lowered from the glory of God and has become a beast. See, but God is doing something today. He's summoning all those who are in the depths of the sea. Praise God. And we're going to see what God intends to do with them. Now, we're going to the heart of the matter here. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth before him. And thousands Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him, and the judgment was set, and the books were opened. I beheld then, because the voice of the great words which the horn spoke, and behold, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives was prolonged for a season and for a time. Now, let us pause here. Don't, let's not just pause here for a moment. I want us to understand that, first of all, observe something. I beheld till thrones 
were cast down. Just, uh, uh, just watch the, the precedents. Thrones were cast down and the ancient of day did sit. Whose garment was white as snow and his hair, the hair of his head like white wool, his throne was like a fiery flame and his wheel like burning fire. Now the ancient of days, why is it that thrones were cast down before the ancient of days did sit? I want you to understand that the thrones that were cast down represent the saints of God who have ascended on high. They are the ones who sit on thrones. They are the ones who manifest the ancient of days, who in reality is the I am, the Alpha and the Omega, the living God. Ancient of days means the one who is without beginning, without end. The one who has eternal life. He's manifested only after you and I are seated on the throne. We are the ones that manifest the Alpha and the Omega. We are the ones who have, you know, now these things are twofold. They're twofold. It's a twofold way. We judge everything that is ungodly in us, anything that is not of God in us, we present it before the presence of God, before the lake of fire. God's presence is like a burning fire. It's truth that emerges. Spirit is like a burning fire that dissolves anything that is dissolvable. Anything that is not spirit cannot stand before the revelation of God. Judgment starts off here in us first. Everything human in us, flesh and blood, is dissolved. Everything that does not glorify God in us, everything that the boastful nature of a man I do this, I am, I do this. All that is dissolved in the lake of fire because there is only I am who lives. Now, this is the same thing that happened when Moses appeared before the burning bush. Every child of God must be summoned before this flame of fire and must have every elementary thing, everything carnal, everything of this world, every idol, everything must be dissolved in the light of the revelation of Christ. Everything. In our human experience, in the depths of the sea, we are, we are all subject to vanity. And these things have brought so much pain they have multiplied our sorrows, lusts, murders, lies, backstabbing, hate, boastful. All these are attributes for those who live in the flesh, in the depths of the sea, where there is no knowledge of God. The depths of the sea is hell, for a place reserved for those who forget God. But thank God the Lord is summoning his people. The whirlwind well is staring up the sea. We are hearing the mystery of the I am again. The same whirlwind well that 
came in the time of Job, when Job was in his tribulation. The same whirlwind that reminded Job, that asked Job, do you remember the morning stars? Do you remember the sons of God? God is speaking to us again, bringing remembrance of our state in the beginning, our celestial state in Him. We who obey and follow unto know the Lord do sit on the throne of God. Spontaneously, we manifest the Lord. Everything that is not God in us is dissolved by the revelation of the I am because I am who is the flaming fire, okay, is the one that is in the creation outside of God. There is nothing else in the creation. We have to allow every idol in us. Everything has to be dissolved completely in the flame of fire. This is what is translated into the lake of fire in the book of Revelation, which we have to look at in another message. Praise God. Tens of thousands, my rights, all are gathered unto the Lord. We are all gathered unto him today, spontaneously. As we hear this word of God, we are all gathered. We stand before the Lord, in the Lord, and minister to the Lord. As I speak today, I am ministering to the Lord. I am speaking to the Lord. In this new dispensation, we live unto the Lord. You see, notice that everybody in this new dispensation stands before the Lord. Meaning that we are consciously aware of the Lord. And besides the Lord, there is nothing else. In this new dispensation, we live wholly unto the Lord. If I speak, it's the Lord. What I see is the Lord. I worship, I honor. I live on account of the Lord. And this is Mount Zion, my rights. My rights. Innumerable company of spirits made perfect. The gathering is ongoing. You are not going to hear it on the BBC. You are not going to hear it on the CNN. You are not going to hear it on Al Jazeera or any of the, you know, the, the news networks. It's something that is already happening. The Lord is coming as a thief. The work is ongoing. If you want to enjoy pleasures, glory and honor, you must submit yourself to what the Lord is doing today. The boastful beast is destroyed. The man of the flesh, the outer man, is dissolved in the knowledge of Christ. That is the problem. Every imprint of the beast is erased from us. So that our members now begin to be used to serve the Lord. Praise God. The other beasts had their dominion taken away from them, but they were preserved, prolonged for a season and a time because they have now become instruments of the Lord. And those of us who have believed the Lord, have understood the Lord, will now become an interface of the Lord. And the Lord uses us. The Lord manifests himself through us in this age. We have submitted the dominion belongs to the Lord. Outside of the Lord, I can do nothing. Outside of the Lord, I am nobody. Praise God. And what happens for those after this judgment? There's something beautiful. Okay. Daniel chapter 7, verse 13 to 14. I saw in the night visions, 
and behold, one like the Son of Man, okay, came with the cloud of heavens and came to the ancient of death. And they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion, glory, and a kingdom that all people, nations, language, languages should serve him and his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Okay, now you can see the Son of Man who appears in the cloud of heaven. First of all, we've seen the judgment of God. Like I said, we've judged that which is within us. Everything that is not God has been taken out of us, destroyed. Okay. The inhabitants of this world who are in the depths of the abyss, who have submitted themselves to God, are purified, are regenerated, rebirth, born again. Everything flesh is dissolved in the, in the fire of the Lord, in the fire of truth. They've conformed themselves to the image of the Lord. These are the ones who are sent on high into the Lord. Praise God. These are the ones who are united with the Lord. You notice that they, they drew him. The Son of Man was ushered in into the presence of the Lord. And unto him was given dominion, glory, power, and honor. And a kingdom that has no beginning, no end. Jesus says, all power in heaven and earth has been given over to me. In likewise manner, anyone who has followed the Lord, the guidance of the Spirit in the regeneration, rediscover the glory and the power of God. There is nobody else that will manifest the glory and the power of God except you and I. We are the ones from the beginning in God, creating and maintaining this world. There's no other one. We are Him. We are the ones united in the Lord. We are the my rights united in Lord. We are sons of God. And God wants to redeem His sons. The Lord has no pleasure in seeing His sons suffer. He wants them to arise from their sufferings and come back into life. It is the Father's pleasure to give you the kingdom. And we have to arise and receive it. But we must live this transient life and begin to Walk once more in the image and the liking of, likeness of God. In the spiritual image and in the likeness of God. In this state, we have power over fire. Nothing can hurt or destroy us in this state. But everything human is dissolved. This is what the judgment of God is all about. The judgment of God comes to destroy destroy all those our attachments to humanity, to vanity. So that we come back to that state where the Lord and the Lord alone is our treasure and our life. And we live once more by the light of God. Every person, every nation, even if it takes a thousand years, even if it takes a million years, every soul will come before the judgment seat and they will see the Lord manifest in the saints who judge the world. They judge the world simply by manifesting 
the truth manifesting the glory of God. And this brings conviction of sin and torment to those who rebel against Lord. Now this is a very deep topic. Okay, and I will pick on it in an, in the next message which will speak about the lake of fire as it is described in the book of Revelation. The Lord keep you. Amen.